Welcome to Public Interface. I'm Mark, and joining me today is Chris Sullum, Development Manager of Valir. Today we're going to be talking about life and death in digital services. Chris? Hey, it's great to be here. So, we're not literally talking about life and death, are we? Yes, we are. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so far no one has died as the result of one of our deployments. Yeah. So, give me a sense of how high the stakes can be sometimes. Well, you know, it, it depends really on the scope of, of what you're deploying and the nature of it. Um, you could be pushing out a hot fix that could be fixing an extremely critical bug, and that could be, you know, from the client's perspective, a really high stakes deployment. From your perspective, you know, you change one line of code, right? You swapped a greater than less than sign, you fixed a broken test, everything goes as planned, and, and you get on with your day. You're done in an hour. Um, other deployments could take you an entire weekend, right? And it requires a lot of, you know, communication, planning, and, you know, a lot of, of worry while you're watching some progress bars, hoping that nothing's going to go wrong. And what are some of the first steps that you got to take to make sure you have a, a, a successful deployment or a good foundation? Um, the, one, the first thing you have to do to be really successful in any project environment, and I try to, you know, coach my staff on this too, is you need to understand from the client, from the business perspective, what it is that they are expecting. You know, what is it that they are that they want us to build? Because sometimes what the client wants and what you've been asked to build can be different. You know, not hugely different because that means some people aren't really doing their jobs. But you know, there there are some omissions, there are some subtle differences, and if you don't have that understanding, you're not going to know to account for those things. What are some of the thorniest issues that you have to deal with? One of the, one of the problems that seems really difficult up front is when, you know, they want a zero downtime deployment. Um, it's certainly possible, but it requires, you know, a little bit of planning. Um, you know, it, it's a lot easier if you have a load balanced environment because you can deploy to one server at a time and just sort of take it out of the load balancer until it's ready and then put it back in once the new code has been deployed to it. That can become a little bit more complex if there are some other, you know, steps involved in the deployment. Like, let's say you're hooking up to a new web service, right? So when you deploy to that first server and now it's connecting to the new web service, say when you log in, you can't have one server that has the new code and one server that has the old code responding to requests at the same time while you deploy to the third server. So that becomes a little bit more complicated, so you have to do a little bit of planning. And what are some of the, the best tools that you have at your disposal to solve these problems? Um, so here we have had a lot of success with uh, Jenkins. Uh, we can pretty much run anything we need to through Jenkins. Um, we do a lot of site core deployments here. We also do, uh, you know, AEM deployments. Um, and we are able to use Jenkins to fully automate deployments to both of those systems. And we can do things like, you know, push schema changes up to solar if we write, write the correct scripts. Um, we can, you know, take servers out of the load balancer with the, the proper scripts in Jenkins. Like they have a plugin for everything. It's an open source tool. Uh, pretty much anything you can think of that you need is, is available. And if it's not, you know, you can make it. We've actually made a couple of our own tools to do config transformations here. Robot army. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> automate everything. That's, that's the key to a successful deployment. Um, if you're doing something manually, find a way to automate it. Put yourself out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> so, I'll save the, the most important question for last. Obviously very serious. How much coffee do you drink a day? Too much. Um, I used to have a strict rule, no, no coffee after noontime. Um, lately, due to various life circumstances, I have broken that rule. You're a latte guy, espresso? I Iced coffee, pure New Englander. All right. So thank you, Chris, for taking time out of your very hectic day to talk with me. Hey, it's great to be here. So that's our show. Follow us on Twitter at Valir. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And as always... Watch us again as we implement another episode of Public Interface.